Welcome to the Aging Mastery Program on Advanced Planning. My name is Steve Hernandez. I am the Executive Director of the Connecticut State Legislature's Commission on Women, Children, Seniors, Equity and Opportunity. Advanced planning is quite simply taking stock of your values, of your needs, and your desires of what you want to occur when you become either seriously ill or incapacitated for the benefit of your own care and wishes, for the benefit of the people that you care about and the people that care about you, end of life decisions should not be made at the end of life. Making these critical decisions about end of life prior to incapacity will ensure that your wishes are taken care of as well as the wishes of your family in times of either incapacity or serious illness. Advanced planning can be complicated because of some of the terms that are used that are terms of art. Some of these are legal terms, but some of them are also terms that are used in hospital settings. Let's go through some of those key terms. A healthcare advanced directive can do one or two things. It can leave specific instructions on how it is that you are to be cared for if you become seriously ill or incapacitated. But it also can designate someone to make these decisions for you. This is called a proxy or an agent. A living will is an actual document that you prepare that designates what it is that you want to occur if you become terminally ill, what types of treatment you would like to pursue, and the limits of treatment that you would like. A medical power of attorney is a critical document in illness or incapacity. A medical power of attorney actually designates a person who can make decisions on your behalf in those circumstances. A medical power of attorney can be an agent, a proxy, a representative, or a surrogate. A do not resuscitate order, or a DNR order as it's commonly known, is an order to not provide cardiopulmonary resuscitation in the event of breathing stoppage or your heart stopping. A DNR order does not affect treatments like pain management, medications, or nutrition. It is simply an order that you create in consultation with your doctor that says, in the event of my heart stopping or my breathing stopping, do not resuscitate. Now some states also use physicians or medical orders for life-sustaining treatment. These are different. These are orders that allow your doctor to make decisions about intubation, antibiotics, feeding tubes, and other interventions that might extend your life. Check your state to see if these are options that are available to you. And finally, organ and tissue donation. In the event that there are healthy tissues that may be donated after your death, it is important that your wishes be made clear with your family, with your doctor, and others so that if you would like to provide your organs for donation, that is ready upon your passing. Palliative care is a specific type of care that happens during any stage of illness. Hospice care is specifically the type of care that comes at the end of life. It is comfort care, but it is a type of comfort care where the family no longer wants to go through painful or difficult treatments in the end of life. Firstly, hospice care is covered by Medicare, VA benefits, Medicare Advantage, Medicaid, and other types of coverage. There are no out-of-pocket costs for hospice care. On the other hand, palliative care, that is care that is available to you during any stage of illness, may require some co-pays. There are some difficult and personal questions that you should be able to answer in thinking about advanced care. Firstly, 
how long would I want to continue medical treatment in the face of illness? Secondly, am I willing to lose critical abilities, such as the ability to walk, to talk, care for myself, or recognize those around me? One thing that is critical to understand is that your advanced planning decisions can be developed on a continual basis. These are your decisions, and they should be subject to your thoughts, your changes, and your development as you move into end of life. The American Bar Association recommends that you think of revisiting your advanced planning when one of five things occur. Think of this as the five D's of advanced planning. When you reach a new decade in life, if you experience a death in your family, in the event of divorce, if you receive a new diagnosis, or if you experience significant decline in your condition. When it comes to advanced planning, communication is key. But as we know, these can be very difficult conversations. It's important to communicate with your family, with your agents and proxies, your wishes along the way. It'll ensure that your family knows how to respond in the event of a serious illness or medical condition. It'll also ensure that your medical team is fully aware of what you want to happen as you near end of life.